Uh, we're starting off this um, event with today's uh, online editors panel discussion. It is a special day for us because uh, tomorrow's our foundation day. Uh, lots of excitement, lots of food. Um, we are going to start with a very short video clip, a message from our founders, and then go on to get starting with the panelists. Good morning friends, hi, it gives me immense pleasure to wish each one of you on the occasion of a Foundation Day in 1981 that AdFactors Advertising was founded, AdFactors PR 2 was established on the same day in 1997, while AdFactors Advertising turns 34, AdFactors PR celebrates our 18th anniversary. Friends, as we turn 18, we must combine the exuberance of youth with the responsibility of an adult. A youthfulness ought to be exhibited through constant innovation and energetic engagement with our clients. And when it comes to responsibility, we must display in nurturing long-term relationship with clients, colleagues and media. Our anniversary has brought in good tidings. A recent strategic wins includes the Godrej Group, the consumer division of Johnson & Johnson, Roche Products, ISB, IDFC and the house of Hiranandani among others. Many of you would be aware that earlier this week AdFactors PR was nominated in 10 categories at the Saber APEC Award 2015 by the Homes Report. This is a new record for the consultancy. So here is wishing you all the heartiest congratulations. The good news comes close on the heels of AdFactors PR getting 28 nominations at the Saber South Asia Awards. I am confident that the case studies will win many awards on September 16, the eve of Ganesh Chaturthi. Perhaps this would be the Lord's way of showering blessings on all of us. On this occasion, I would like to thank my colleagues at AdFactors Advertising. They have supported all new businesses of AdFactors Group, including AdFactors Public Relations, and showed the seed for what the group is today. I wish everyone a happy Foundation Day. I am confident that a bright and glorious future lies ahead of us. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. My heartiest congratulations to each one of you, wonderful colleagues and partners at AdFactors Advertising and AdFactors Public Relations. As you all know, AdFactors Advertising turns 34 and the PR firm turns 18, the 5th of September 2015. As AdFactors PR enters into adulthood, or one might say professional adulthood, there is a lot to feel happy about. Both our firms, the advertising agency and the PR firm are market leaders. We have a robust culture, we have clients who everyone aspires for and we have a sense of hope, optimism and confidence to navigate our way through the exciting times that we live in. It is also an occasion for some amount of reflection. The world should rightfully expect a certain amount of professional maturity and an agility to deal with the complexities of the changing times. This year, our focus is to match up with the peer group in terms of hygiene and quality, processes, proactive thinking, ideation, engagement and adoption of digital in our work. I am sure each one of you are seized with it, each team is seized with it and it will make a stronger firm as we close this 
current financial year. In the year ahead, though, we should be a seriously differentiated firm in terms of the value that we deliver to our clients, both in terms of strategic counsel as well as the quality of execution that we are known for. In the third year from now, we should aspire to be an innovator and a disruptor that defines the rules of the game in the PR industry in India. And within three years, we should all work towards doubling in size and quadrupling in professional stature. To that extent, I would like to tell everybody that we need to change a little bit in our orientation and attitude to growth. Each day that we work and each milestone that we cross, we must have a sense of enrichment and fulfillment and our clients should have an overwhelming sense of the value that we create. With these brief comments, I would like once again to congratulate each one of you and thank each one of you for being a part of this journey and I would like each one of us to start marching at a new pace to embrace the exciting world and the times that we live in. Thank you very much. Happy birthday at Fractus family. Happy birthday at Fractus VR. Three cheers for us, we rock. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday at Fractus family. family. Happy foundation day at Fractus. Happy birthday 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 at Fractus. Happy 18th birthday. Happy 18th at Fractus. I'm proud to be an Fractus. Happy birthday, Ad Factors. Congratulations, Mother and Rajesh, sir. Proud to be part of Ad Factors. Very happy Factors. Very happy Foundation Day. Very happy Foundation Day. Happy birthday, Ad Factors. Happy Foundation Day. Here you go. Happy birthday, Ad Factors. Happy birthday, Ad Factors. Have a fantastic year ahead. Happy Ad Factors. Happy anniversary. Happy Foundation Day. Congratulations to Ad Factors. Congratulations, Ad Factors. Happy Foundation Day. Happy Foundation Day. Happy Birthday, Ad Factors. Happy Birthday, Ad Factors. So that was a brief message from our Chairman and Managing Director. And our panelists for this afternoon are here with us already. Uh, what I will do is introduce them uh, one by one and request that they please come and sit up here so we can get started uh, without any more delay. Uh, our first panelist for this afternoon is Vikas Dandekar, who is currently an online editor with The Economic Times. He started his journalism career with Express Pharma Pulse, which is part of the Indian Express Group, back in 1997. With, in a career spanning almost two decades, he has worked with Pharma Asia as India Bureau Chief and CNBC TV 18 as Corporate Bureau Chief. Vikas, can I please ask you to come up here? We also have Yogesh Mahendel Dale, who is an online editor of Lokmat, which is the largest Marathi daily. Prior to Lokmat, he has worked with Sakal, Maharashtra Times, Asian Age, Ticker Wire News, The Bengal Post, and covered business, the business beat for over a decade now. He has been with Lokmat for over four years now. Yogesh, may I please welcome you? Our third editor for, this, for today is Dinesh Unikrishnan who is financial editor at First Post and covers banking, economy, regulation and policy and rural finance. Uh, he started his career with The Telegraph in 2004 and has worked with several leading media houses including The Indian Express, um, UNI, PTI, Reuters and Mint. And finally, um, we have uh, one of our newest clients. We have Sujit Patil who is VP and Head of Group Corporate Communications with the Godrej Group. Thank you, Sujit, for being here today with us. Um, he has over 17 years of experience uh, and spearheads corporate communications and branding activities for all Godrej companies. Prior to Godrej, uh, Sujit has had very fruitful stints with the Tata Group, with l and and with Emerson's Pro Emerson Process Management. And finally, to moderate the session, we have Arnab Mukherjee. Um, I'm not sure I need to introduce him. Uh, but I will, for the benefit of everyone here, um, has for a decade and a half participated in the journeys of several startup initiatives and businesses from conception to initiation and scaling up stages in India and beyond. He's now a key part of uh, virtually all the key uh, clients at Ad Factors, and he's going to be the moderator for this panel discussion. Arnab, I hand it over to you to take it from here. Thanks, uh, Archana, for the introductions. And uh, 
I must thank uh, Vikram uh, for and Archana, as well as all the panelists right up front, for the efforts that Vikram and Archana have put in to make this uh, session a possibility. Let me set the discussion, let me get into the discussion straight away and let me open with a few observations that attempt to outline the terrain. We are in the times of online media. We seek to explore today and gain some understanding of. I do recognize that these observations could be inadequate as the terrain we are exploring today is evolving so rapidly at so many levels that uh, what is the final word this moment is yester moment's wisdom by the time I finish my sentence. However, given the immense experience of today's panelists, I'm confident that we will be able to enhance our knowledge and understanding through information and insights of longer lasting relevance. Four observations, quick ones. First one may appear to be stating the obvious, but nonetheless is to ensure that we explicitly acknowledge what we implicitly are aware of. That media shapes society and in turn is shaped by society and reflects it. It is logical, therefore, that as corporate organizations being part of society, we as individuals, we as PR professionals being part of society, we are shaped by what's there in the media, and we also play a role in shaping it. This discussion, therefore, about online media would help shape us, would in some way perhaps also act as a feedback mechanism into the media and enable better interaction with it. The second observation is a statistic, which was published two days ago. Some, many of you may have noted it. As of 30th of June, India's total internet user base stood at 352 million, of which 60%, meaning 213 million, are on the mobile. The interesting aspect of this statistic is that India took more than a decade to go from 10 million internet connections to 100 million. About three years to go from 100 million to 200 million. And just about a year to go from 200 million to 300 million. It is the pace is accelerating. We have reached an inflection point. The pace is accelerating. And evidently, online has reached an inflection point. The other interesting aspect of this uh, figure is that it's therefore becoming more inclusive. Online is no longer about English language alone. And I'll come to one more statistic which substantiates that. Another statistic is that in 1998, Google reported 3.6 million search queries per year. But by 2012, that number had grown to 1.2 trillion. The use of online as a tool has exploded and its relevance has exploded in our lives. Third is about the growing proportion of regional language content online. Different reports tell us that Lang local language internet usage in India is growing at 47% year on year and outstrips that of English. And by 2018, 60% of all online content would be consumed and produced in regional languages, increasingly mirroring content availability and consumption patterns of print and television. Last observation. Differences in behavioral patterns of digital natives versus digital immigrants. Anytime, anywhere, on the go is the mantra today. 
A study by Innerscope Research showed that digital natives switch their attention 27 times per hour. Just about once every two minutes. And because there is so much time spent switching, the user's emotional attachment with the content is low. One more observation from the same research was that while digital immigrants want to see a beginning, a middle and end to stories in that order, digital natives accept the story in any order, almost like packet-based storytelling. The scenario these facts and figures appear to paint is the world that we know it is changing fundamentally. And unless we, whether as media platforms, corporate organizations, or PR professionals, evolve synchronously, we will be reduced to irrelevance or even extinction soon. This is where I would now request my panelists to come in and share their initial thoughts on. Is a fundamental alteration of media as we know it and engage with it truly underway or are these statistics merely an alarmist way of picking up data to support an hypothesis that there is a fundamental change underway? Do we need to recognize this reality and equip ourselves to navigate it? Or can we simply believe that this is a nightmare or a chimera which will pass on its own and we can sleep through it and tomorrow when we wake up, life will be just as it was a few years ago and none of us need to have equipped ourselves or evolved any differently and carry on with life as usual as it was earlier. So may I start with Sujit, is this reality a reality or is it just an alarmist idea? All right, good afternoon everybody. Uh, uh, I think uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, I'm not a journalist, first of all. I've never worked in a PR consultancy. So uh, the views that I'm going to give is from an angle of a corporate uh, in terms of how as a marketeer, how as a corporate communicator uh, we look at it. So, so journalism, uh, or, or say for example, literature. Journalism is basically for me literature in hurry. You know, it's it's and, and and with the kind of social media trends which are happening, I think it's going to be at a lightning speed. Uh, that's the first trend which is uh, happening. Uh, I would like to also place it on record that uh, I think since the time of Ramayana and Mahabharata, I think PR is same. I mean, there's no change happening. It's the way we do PR which is changing. Do you agree with that? You know. Uh, things have changed. The PR is PR. I mean, the process is the same. Uh, uh, just the landscape is changing and hence the tools that we use are changing. Currently, it's the social media. Maybe it stays, maybe it doesn't stay. But that's, that's my firm belief that PR and storytelling is going to be uh, uh, omnipresent. Having said that, there have been a lot of changes which have happened uh, in the recent past. And uh, I took the liberty of doing some research from the net and, you know, like to give some statistics in terms of how the things are shaping and changing in terms of uh, PR. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the way uh, journalists also report. So, so starting from the devices, I mean, there was a time when there used to be a hardwired computer and, you know, people sitting across and writing stories. Today it's on the fly, cafe coffee day is good enough and a mobile phone is enough, good enough to actually file a story. So, so ease of writing stories has become, so speed has increased and hence that has been an imperative. Uh, reporters, today we have about 350 million bloggers in the world. I mean, these are all reporters for us, right? Uh, you, can, you, you cannot have those, those many reporters. I think the whole paradigm has shifted in terms of people who are writing about you, writing different narratives about products, brands, and corporates. So that, that's another trend which is uh, uh, coming up. Direct mail used to be one important thing. I mean, uh, I have a statistic which says the U.S. Postal Service uh, in 2014, uh, you know, sent about 554 million pieces of mail per day. But if you see with the advent of technology, 6.1 million billion messages sent per day. So it's, 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 it's clearly visible that the, the paradigm is shifting. I mean, the modes of communication are changing. Another important statistics which we all agree as PR people is going to be the second day news phenomena is gone. It's the second hour phenomena. I mean, uh, I have esteemed editors here. I mean, you'll agree that you need to break the news or report a story in, in the shortest possible time. Press conferences have changed. 
today's Twitter or Google Hangouts, which can also double up as a press conference. Uh, impressions are no longer used. It's about the influence which it can create. Uh, news clips have become news links. So shareability is very important. I think that's, that's where the whole world is moving towards. And that's very important. Enabler, uh, the one of the enablers for that has been the social media part. User feedback. It's instant today because you get it on the Twitter or wherever. You know, you, you get it immediately. I mean, focus groups are no longer focus group. You have Facebook friends who are your focus groups. You can have millions of people giving you inputs on any topic that you require. So if I may sum up in terms of the advent of social media tools and stuff, I think the paradigm is shifting. It's here to stay. Having said that, traditional media is not going to die because we still require the authenticity. We still require the relationships. We still require the facts to be verified. So social media alone is not great. I think it's a combination which is going to be. That's my perspective on the paradigm which you placed. Basically, you say that the paradigm is shifting, but storytelling remains the same. Absolutely right. Dinesh? If I understood the question correctly, you know, you are asking is the new wave of media is here to stay or is just a passing this thing. So, you know, Based on my experience, I believe that we are in a very critical transition phase, you know, already. We are already there and we are all part of it. So the traditional media houses, whether it is print, television, and even the new wave of online media houses are already adapted to the concept of, you know, what you call the integrated news concept. So what is integrated news concept? Like, like Arnab said, Media cannot be different from the society. You know, it's just a reflection of the society and what the readership wants. So the world is fast pacing ahead, you know. And the mode of communications have changed very drastically. You know, none of us uh, write letters these days as we used to do it, you know, 10 years before, 15 years before. And even telecommunication has changed very, you know, dramatically, messaging, video communication. So the, Everywhere you can see the, you know, the technology has uh, advanced a lot. So that's how the life progress and the media cannot, uh, you know, say that, no, we, we still believe in the old traditional good old days and we will stick to the print days, you know. So that, then they will go extinct, they will die. So if you look at last five years, of course, I don't need to, you know, Enlighten you about how media has changed. You are all very intelligent and informed people. You are all in the communication business. But uh, as you can see, you know, even the traditional media houses has have developed. You know, the uh, the online, the web presence very significantly. You look at any newspaper. In most places, we see the news breaking first on the web, right, and later coming to the print. So the Earlier, we used to wait for the news stories for the next morning, right? So that happens in the next five minutes now. And in the next half an hour or say one hour, two hours, you see the day two stories, what we call, you know, what happens next, right? So, so it's very fast-paced uh, fast way of, and this is going to stay here. I can say that with uh, certain, uh, you know, belief because... Uh, there are several factors, you know, some are internal to the media business, some are, you know, very, uh, uh, I mean, forced by the external elements, like I said you know, just now. So, the, uh, you know, if you look at, say, some newspaper, most of them are passing through a phase where, say, one example, the print cost has gone up substantially. That's one, one part, <coughs> right? So, what is the way out? And there's too much of competition also. So they have already moved a significant, significant part of their operations, news operations, to the online space. So next five or ten years, I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, online-only newspapers. You know, even some of the very established brands. That's that's my belief. It may take 15 years or 20 years, but it will happen one one day. So it's going to stay. So that's to answer your question, right? Yeah. Well, I attempted to keep an escape hatch open for those who wanted to believe that will that it may be a passing phase 
and tomorrow they could wake up like Rip Van Winkle and believe that, oh, we are back to the way we practice PR. But so far, Sujit said mm, it is about the next hour. And then Dinesh brought it even further down and said it's the next five minutes. So I guess, mm, I mean, the people here who, uh, who wanted to be Rip Van Winkle may have to think the paradigm a little more. Uh, may I now ask Yogesh, in terms of, and specifically, of course, you have made the transition from uh, media, traditional media, but also presently you are with the largest Marathi publication and the online edition of that. Uh, how does this paradigm of whether it is supposed to change, remain the same, how does it look from the vantage point of a language publication and that to one as strong as Lokmat? Two things. Uh, Arnav has said about internet uh, report, that I am a, I am, I am AI report. So actually I had bahaded that you have <laughs> already put, up, put me in trouble. <laughs> so everybody has a number that internet users base is around 345 million. And he, as he rightly said, out of 345 million, more than 130 million comes from the local languages. And you are aware that when internet started, uh, it belongs to only English. Hardly one, two, three, four, five uh, language websites from each state used to be on online and 90% area was covered by uh, English channels. But now the situation changed and is rightly said that local languages will grow faster than English. English has come to a stagnancy almost. And this, this report also states that it will grow around by 75% and it will be largely driven by rural India because already urban uh, India has internet uh, penetration 80%, 70% or uh, more than 75%. But in rural India, it will grow much, much faster. And uh, going forward, you might have seen the Airtel sites of 4G. That 4G is there. And when 4G will come in big way, 3G spectrum will open further. 2G spectrum will open further. So their rates are going to come down. So the people who cannot afford internet right now at prevailing rates will able to afford it. So with 4G, many more Indians will come on internet on mobile. Uh, then your specific questions, what will happen next? Is it going to stay or what? 110% it is going to stay. There is no doubt about it because there is no choice. As Dinesh rightly said, print costs are going up. But that is not the only reason. What I feel is that now it is so convenient because on mobile, on your palm, you have whole world. I'm sure right now in this hall, there are a few people who are already sharing something with their colleagues, with their uh, relatives or their friends. Something, so actually they are tran transferring some kind of content from this place. So five minutes, one hour, I say it's not even about five minutes or one hour. It's up to you. <laughs> if you have 2G connection, it will take two minutes. If you have 3G, it will take half a minute or less than that. If you have 4G, before you send it, it is reached. It has reached. So it is up to you that how you send the message. Now, what will happen to the traditional media? That is always discussed and we are always uh, are worried because our bread and butter is a traditional media. Though we, uh, were, I work for the largest uh, Marathi daily Lokmat, you ju you'll just go mad to hear, I think many people don't know, 75 lakh plus is our readership. Can you imagine the language daily is the fifth in India. But the problem is, suppose we are surviving on the print, next is the online. But where from revenue will come? That's the biggest challenge online industry is going to face. So I believe uh, going forward, organization will have to come up with solutions which will able to monetize the news content. Presently news is free, everybody wants free, but somebody has to pay for it. So whole world, we take cues from America and England and Europe on all these countries, they are still struggling how to make it affordable, how to run the show. 
currently it is from print so i don't think it will happen in fort fortnight or a year or five years or so it is going to stay there are many reasons apart from this monetization that i believe our country doesn't believe on revolution we never did any revolution in any of the field we are a country which is a, you can say in a buddha's language middle path not at the down side or even not at the top side we always prefer middle path so it will take decades to get away with the print media or channels or this and that and 100% online or mobile it will take decades or maybe centuries so transition will not be a very rapid people will take print paper because for obvious reasons for their daily morning rituals they need newspaper <laughs> they can't go for the mobile so there are limitations and another thing i last point i would like to make make about the authenticity the biggest problem i think in social media is the authenticity of the content because problem with the social media is that everybody is a reporter now today you might have seen there was a uh, some fire at rbi building in bkc and the picture which were not of rbi building were cir in circulation it was not a rbi building that uh, fire was not of that magnitude but somebody from I, i don't know some of dig out that picture and started uh, circulating it so the biggest problem uh, even you might have seen uh, railway accidents then uh, uh, another biggest example yeah times of india the paper like times of india did it uh, during that uttarakhand uh, uh, big thing happened that narendra modi rescued some uh, 11000 gujaratis air lifted he air lifted 11000 gujaratis and that went viral like anything actually that was not a case so authenticity is one of the biggest challenge we are, we will we are facing and we will be facing on social media because you can in gujarat couple of days back or last week they uh, shut internet for a week to avoid the riots but you cannot do it for 365 days you can shut it for a day or two you can do it for 365 days to how to stop rumors from social media because this tool is in everybody's hand in print or in channel now channel also have crossed the lines but at least in print there is authenticity that content is right content is correct so we have to face this couple of challenges vikas given all the perspectives which have been brought in by uh, sujit dinesh of the foreshortening time frames but also what yogesh brought in of authenticity monetization as someone who has made the transition perhaps amongst the largest number of medium from print to television to online only subscriber only back again to prints online where do you see this whole world in terms of how it will be few years few months down the line and what does it mean for media for media people for or corporate organizations and for pr people on the subject of uh, uh, this whole transformation that we are seeing uh, in fact uh, you know it just puts me back in memory uh, when i started in 95 i used to have a typewriter to write reports so 20 years down it's so different and uh, we've got a explosion of outlets and uh, as my co-panelists mentioned everybody is a reporter Uh, by the way, I like this uh, hashtag also. It's very nice, digital miradost. So you know the point is, um, you have uh, 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 everybody can participate in this huge social change that is happening. It's a massive storm brewing out there. The point is, how much of it is can be really applied? How much of it is is really a clutter and an aggregation of information? We. are seeing a time when all of the news reports all the newspapers are actually doing most of the replication you know there is no scientific uh, approach in the newsroom the the newsrooms have changed but i think you know there is a lot of uh, education that is required uh, so far as the training is required for the journalists or whoever i mean and that's where i think the bigger problem is happening where um, people are kind of taking cheap pleasure in reading news which is not so important and uh, the authenticity is compromised 
My point is, if news can be routed in a way which is actually important, we see a lot of people on Traffline Mumbai and they keep giving, you know, data, information, minute by minute, you know, uh, updates. I think a lot of that is something that will be needed as we go ahead. And, uh, you know, unless and until um, news organizations drive that change of thought leadership, I think it will become very difficult to become relevant because, you know, people will reject you. If you are not relevant, if your information is not readable enough, I mean, a credibility built over decades will really get wiped out in no time. So I feel the information should be qualitative. It should have well-reasoned, uh, this thing, arguments. And it should be user, uh, you know, the importance of it is that, you know, the user should be able to gain from it. Be it a market report, be it any other report. I don't see, I mean, I feel a lot of it is actually, you know, the, you, re, you read an article, you say, okay, you know, this is what you've gained from it. But I, you know, having worked in an organization, an organization which had a paywall for every report and every page view, I have realized the importance of how, how it is so important that you do your deep dive into every subject so that you get your dollars. So I feel media will sell, the, the product will sell in case you really bring it, bring that relevance into it. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to compete in a market which is fast aggregating. So, let me just react to a few of the expressions which I heard. Dinesh mentioned the integrated news concept. Both Yogesh and Vikas spoke about authenticity, monetization. I was having a discussion with Sujit before this discussion and where he was referring to a co-creation. Now, is there a possibility, Sujit, that the notions, the points which these gentlemen are making and rightly so, and I also want to react to a tweet which I saw uh, from Rahul Jain on uh, whether news media would be replaced by bloggers. It's moving too fast and that is what I presume that this point of being replaced by bloggers, the authenticity is exactly what these gentlemen are bringing to the fore, that 350 million bloggers or whatever number cannot replace the authenticity of organized news media. And yes, there would be, there has been a stage in this whole journey where suddenly with a smartphone or whatever in a di digital device in hand, everyone becomes a journalist. But then gradually once that whole explosion simmers down, you then have a few authentic outlets, possibly from the organized media, whose authenticity is, veracity is um, indubitable. They again come back to the fore. Now, uh, could you share in that context, Sujit, what would be the role of the notion of co-creation that you were talking about? And also perhaps given your experience, what does this integrated media mean? And how should people like us whose job is to facilitate what you need and what these gentlemen need. How should we equip ourselves to be relevant to both these ends of the spectrum by being able to create what is authentic, what is relevant for integrated news dissemination anytime, anywhere, media agnostic, etc. Sujit. Too long a question, so let me just articulate my thoughts. Uh, I think it's a very valid point in terms of uh, uh, the way corporates are looking at curating content. I think there's a big focus in each and every corporate to you know start talking about their brands, their products in a way which is you know shareable, which is uh, you know you know you know palatable by the media, by the customers, by the consumers. And that's where the challenge happens. Because when a, when, a, when a corporate starts curating content, it becomes a biased content. 
and and that's that's something which necessarily or uh, you know may not be picked up by the media because it's it's one way and that's where the context of co-generation came in and i was just discussing with arnab during uh, you know a couple of hours back that if a trend starts uh, that to give out content which is which is authentic which is believable which is good which is shareable it could be created along with the media where where the corporates and the media come together of course along with the consultancies and create content which is which is good for the larger society which gives out a message and a rational which is much more larger than one way kind of communication coming from a corporate so i think i think that co creation is what we were discussing i think it's a trend which has started i mean we would as godrej we would love to you know engage with the online media editors in terms of creating content which are which which, which is which is useful for both the media is believable for them rightfully okay for them to quote and use and which is end of the day create some kind of a positivity and a reputation building for the corporates so that's that's where we are coming from i think we need to differentiate uh, between the so, uh, you know the social media wave and the adaptation of traditional media into the online you know new media this thing because uh, as my colleagues uh, mentioned you know if you go by the social media information so that lack, the, uh, as uh, was discussed here that lacks certain amount of authenticity you know those sort of issues come up now even about the new wave of media you know if in the last 2 uh, 3 years we have seen or 3 4 years we have seen a number of new media houses setting up you know online only uh, publications these are in you know i don't think i can relate this to the social media wave you know because th those are all done by say those are th those originate from unorganized quarters so you need to differentiate first that you don't need to mix up both what is the new online media wave and the social media wave once you mix up you lose direction and whatever you do will be in the wrong direction first thing and the second thing is uh, we are still evolving you know as journalists you know when it comes to the new wave of uh, online media we are still evolving there are say 10 12 i don't know so many new publications which have happened last few years even now so there is a process through which these organizations their abilities whether they stick to the cardinal rules of journalism you know the uh, whether they uh, keep to that you know if the, that that will take some time you know it doesn't happen overnight so the, it's a trial and error period so after this what happens those who can still claim that we have certain characteristics which are which is needed for the needed for a good media house only they will survive the rest will perish so that is uh, one aspect so you need to give some time you know to observe because it's an evolving phase in say 5 10 years back you saw a number of new traditional print newspapers coming in even in english in regional languages you look at now how many of them survive or you know close to uh, you know or having very serious troubles these are all examples of how many of them can withstand the competition and convince the public the readership that they are up to certain standards the question which i wanted to put to the audience is have any one of us created anything in the lines of what we can uh, claim to be integrated uh, communication uh, initiatives to engage with the multimedia format that these gentlemen are talking of which has become the reality in how often do you receive something which is relevant for you in any of the format or more specifically what is it that you find relevant in the online format which you would want to receive sujit you wanted to add something so i missed the first part of the question a uh, second part of the question which is about the integrated uh, communication approach so so if i may take the liberty to take the example of godrej so so we 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 do believe in an in integrated uh, communication approach for us integrated in terms of uh, integrating in earned paid and owned media 
I mean, if it's going to be PR, then it's supposed to be earned kind of a media. But then today with the lines which differentiate the genre of earned, paid and, me, uh, you know, own media diminishing rapidly, I think we all as PR professionals are in an era where we'll be working across these three genres. So, so I think that's where the integrated uh, communication comes in place. We can give you examples, a lot of examples in terms of uh, launches or communications which have uh, happened, which, which, which go in the uh, era of paid as well as unpaid as well as earned. Let's say for example, the hit campaign which we did last week. Uh, it, had, it, had, it had multiple angles to it. So one was a release of a small AV on the multimedia in terms of the video release. So that happens once. So it has a separate segment of audience which is there. Of course, there was the traditional media which was uh, necessary because it had to reach, reach the masses. There was a social media press release. There was an activation. There was, so so it, it's, it's kind of an integrated. And, and, and today the focus is on that kind of an activity for each and every brand. And it's working well for us. So just to add, I just wanted to add that, yes, it is the way to go forward because only PR can be limiting. Again, let me pick a question from the mm, tweets and uh, pose this to Vikas. Uh, how do we distinguish between, or should we at all distinguish, or are we able to distinguish between digital and social media? I think it's uh, very closely intertwined. <coughs> Both are uh, difficult to be separated. Digital media, I think, is, is, a, is a wider uh, subject uh, to discuss. And uh, social media, as we have already seen, like there are so many outlets in which uh, Everybody has become so expressive. I think it's very important that everybody has a has a went to um, you know share their views, and it's very important. Like um, our prime minister keeps doing that in on various uh, forums, is championing it very well. Um, I think that's exactly where uh, things should be moving. Ideally, digital media. I think you know it's a, it's probably the vehicle of transformation uh, over a period of time and as I had said earlier, I think it's very important that we keep the goals in mind on what exactly are we trying to do with it. Is it like, a, I mean it can be very dangerous, um, we've seen so many rumors floating without any basis and it could be because everybody is a journalist as uh, you know. Thing. So I feel uh, social media is extremely important, I mean from our very very specific point of view in terms of business journalism and I have seen, uh, you know, the whole place exploding uh, on Twitter. I'll just give you an example of how it has caught up so well in the US. Uh, most of the pharma trade journalists, they cover uh, advisory committee uh, meetings very closely whenever there is an approval process that goes on in the US FDA. And, you know, you just see how they actually cover it with so much of responsibility. They are all there. You know, it's a very transparent process. And we know exactly sitting at, in India, exactly who, which committee member is saying what, how is he evaluating. And within these very small 140 characters, they define it. They, they give, it, give a very clear picture of where it is all leading, how many votes have been given to which uh, particular drug, and how many are anti. So I feel, you know, if it is governed in a, in a, in a, in a guided manner, I think its, uh, uh, its uh, value will be immense to the society. If it is left loose, it will be a big problem to handle. Uh, an example which we are facing now is about online pharmacies. Many people say that, okay, this is what we can do. There is again a, a very difficult pathway that, you know, if you do something that is wrong, people may be landing up with drugs which are counterfeit, substandard quality. So I think, you know, this is, this is a very wide, um, this thing, even the government is actually countering it. They are still in that evolution process of how do we handle this kind of a monster. Of course, they don't want to take away the benefits of digital media and all of it that can be um, kind of rooted to the society, but it has to be done in an in a, in a extremely, uh, you know, guided manner in terms of defined policies. My question to Yogesh and in fact to everyone else also on the panel. <laughs> Dinesh men mentioned that the whole uh, scenario is evolving. Yes, we understand. But as individuals who have over the last decade or more made the transition from uh, traditional media to this uh, anytime, anywhere, 
sort of digital, social, not social, but digital media rather, what is the personal learning or unlearning that you may have had to do? Of course, something as simple as Vikas mentioned typing on a typewriter to typing on the smartphone. But beyond that, what is the learning and the unlearning that you have had to do? And what could be the learning or the unlearning that we need to do to equip ourselves to be relevant in the mm, new age? There was a great insight when I uh, shifted from print to uh, online. In a couple, uh, couple of months or maybe in six months, a totally different world was open in front of me. And uh, I, I think I'll share it. I, I won't lie, so I'll be, let, it be, uh, let it be straightforward. But when I entered uh, online media, the first thing what happened is that I could actually see what readers are thinking about. See, there is a difference between print media and online media is in online media, you are actually interacting with the readers. You get to know what readers are reading and what they are not reading, what they are accepting, what they are rejecting, what they are sharing, what they are just not looking at. In print media, it's a, it's a passive media. You really don't see what readers are reading. You have to depend on the IRS. IRS and so many other surveys, but those are peanuts. Really, you don't get to know what my reader is reading, how much he is reading editorial, how much he is reading front page, back page, sports, XYZ, so, and so many things. So, when I entered into the online media, the first revelation was startling that I could see what my reader is reading and I'll, I'll, t I'll give you one example. So, uh, imagine, so I actually be started believing that is it a nation of a sex starved people? Because that is the maximum content people like to read, uh, not like to read actually, <laughs> to look for. One day what happened uh, in some uh, couple of years back, when we got all the data from the Google Analytics and uh, our internal mechanism, the matrix suggested that on that particular week, our uh, viewer, we, we called it as a page views. Page views multiple increased, uh, I think some 40% uh, or 60% increase. And actually it takes around a year or two to happen. But that in particular week, some 40 or 60 percent jump was there. So I was just wondering what, what happened, whether there was an Obama election or there, what was it? When I went through the whole data, it occurred that Sunny Leon was entering into Bollywood and we did a slideshow that uh, Hindi, uh, some uh, porn stars entering into the Bollywood, something like that. And that one Sunny, Sunny Leon gave us 40, 50 percent rise in the page views. And you might have seen that recently there was a ban on the porn websites by uh, government. Now any, any person who is sitting with his wife, with his parents and kids will say, no, no, it has to be banned. But when he comes on the social media, <laughs> he just says, government is dictatorial. They are taking our freedom of right away from us and this and that. So these are the two pictures. You ask any person in front of his wife or his mother or father whether porn sites are should be banned or not. He will say yes. But when the same person opines on the social media, he just says government is dictatorial and this and that. Where is our freedom of right by constitution? There are so many things written in the constitution but he just finds this one. Where is our freedom of right? So, this is, this was the, as you asked me, this was the uh, revelation I had when I shifted from print to online. Earlier I used to think that we write how Modi is a good this thing or that thing, how Manmohan Singh did, how personal, uh, how interest rate should be modified or not modified, how mutual funds are beneficial, why a person should involve uh, in, uh, I mean invested in SIP. So many things we used to write and I used to think that people read it. But <laughs> then it occurred, people hardly read it. If I have 200 or 300 uh, stories a day, at least, I'll tell you, only five to six stories are among the 90% read. Balance 10% is the rest of the 350 or whatever remaining stories. Only five to six stories read on multiple occasions and those bring the pages and those are the stories of Sunny Leon, 
Narendra Modi with their anti, uh, that uh, Puffy K. Mandar Mekar or that OVC or Pravin Togdiya, that kind of stuff. So in such a scenario, Dinesh, how do you choose what you publish online? What is, is there a different criteria now? You did mention that newsrooms are evolving, news media and organized news media is evolving. But how do you choose, how do our people know that without including Sunny Leone or Narendra Modi, how can they make what they have, they have a legitimate interest in sharing with the media, how can they make it interesting? So how do you choose? And what has been your experience, whether PR people are learning to understand what your requirements are? Yes, I'll come to that. So first of all, you know, <coughs> don't people look for Bollywood or, uh, you know, for that matter, Sunny Leon or uh, any crime stories, anything in print? Don't you prefer with your morning tea something, some light reads? Or will you go for some complex economic issues? Or how this uh, entire Middle East scenario is evolving in print? So that's the basic human nature, you know. People want to go for light reads. People want to go for more masala things, you know. That's how it always been, let's face it, right? So even if it is print or any other form, you just can't prevent it. You just can't block this because it's up to the society, up to the people who want to read. Why tabloids are more, you know, have picked up well, have been a big success in Bombay or in Bangalore? Because people read it. If people stop reading it, they will be out of business, right? So I come back to the, my original point. Media is a reflection of the existing society. Okay, understand that first. All of us are in the knowledge industry. All of us deals with media and corporates and, uh, you know, who are stand between, you know. So you un must understand that that's how it is. So be just because people want to read Bollywood or, you know, some, I would say, less important matters. So uh, should the new wave, new generation of online media choose to be Bollywood-centric or people-centric? centric or, uh, websites? No. I don't think that's a good idea. That's a dangerous proposition, rather. So now what they should do? I, I don't think uh, the digital wave in India has got the answer to it. It's still exploring, you know, multiple... Uh, it's, it's an experimental phase. I, I still believe that it's an evolving phase. What they want to focus on, you know, is it news? Is it breaking news or is it views, right? So views only portals, we, we have seen so many of them now. Or uh, is it breaking news or is it, uh, you know, more interactive platforms? I don't know. So maybe it will take some more time for the uh, digital media, the online media to figure out what do they exactly want to do. So it's, I think let's give, a, give them some more time. You know, we should give them. Uh, as far well as what journalists should do, from my personal experience, I can tell you, you know, I've been with uh, newswire agencies for five, six years before I moved to print. Now I write for an online only, you know, uh, online media platform. So the basic rules of, for a journalist, what you do remains the same. You know, that's, that's how I feel. Only the platform changes, right? Now, when you, every product is different, and you, you guys know it better. A newspaper, and among newspapers, different papers, if, if you go to a TV, if you go to an online website, the product, how, do, how they, you know, how they produce the same content, it's different. So that change keep happening. So for the online media, you need to be a little more interactive. The difference is, like acting in a film and in a theater. You know, in theater, you get direct feedback from the audience. If you act badly, you'll be booed. If you act well, you will have appreciation. In print, it doesn't happen, you know. You might hear from someone, okay, you did a good story, or that, that wasn't good. Now, this is more a direct interface. It happens almost on a real time. 
So it's a learning phase for journalists as well. So I personally believe anybody who want to stay long in this profession should stick to the original rules of credibility, responsibility, sourcing, you know, and the unbiased attitude when he approach or she approach news. If that person doesn't do that, that's going to be a short story. That's going to be not go he or she is not going to survive in the long term. So that's how it is. The world has proved it again and again. So you, now you may see 10 new houses. After five years, you may see two or three. So that's how it is. And for, as far as the communication professionals, to answer to your questions, again, one clear difference I can tell you is that deadlines have vanished. Right? Earlier, you used to go for, what's your deadline? That's the first question. Probably, you know, if you want to get back with a response from your client to the reporter, what's your deadline? So that he will say 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 6 o'clock, whatever. So for the, if the new media becomes a reality, which I believe it will, the deadlines vanish. So who are act first wins the game. Yes? So for that, what should you do? You should do, you should keep yourself updated with, with information, knowledge, what you are going to talk about, who, who you are going to talk about. You should have a clear understanding about how the newsroom works, right? That's how it is. You need to adapt. You need to grow with the new developments. That's how it is. Final question to Sujit and Vikas. Given that you have interacted with PR professionals over the years in your respective roles, how has your expectation and experience of the PR professional changed in these years and what do you expect from them today? Sujit? Yeah, so my expectations are pretty simple. I mean, uh, in, in terms of um, the advent of social media and digital, I think, I think what is one important driver for them for, for putting up content on that, those platforms, is that the attention span of the readers have gone down. You know, the, the amount of clutter which is there, the amount of data which is coming on from various sites, from various platforms is so much. Uh, the time taken by a reader to actually consume that data is become, you know, pretty, pretty small. And, 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 and the amount of data which is coming is, is, is in-depth and, and too much. So in that scenario, I think what is most important for all of us as PR professionals is to try and look at certain aspects of how we package that data. So one could be rather than going in for large texts and stories, maybe infographics. So I think, I think that's where the whole expectation is changing. I would, I would love my PR consultant to actually invest time on creating infographics which are easy for people to comprehend, easy to share with people and communicate the story in, in a smaller time at a glance rather than for someone to actually go through an entire 800 uh, word article and then get confused probably. So that's one uh, critical thing. The second important thing is how, how the data is curated in terms of uh, shareability in various platforms. How, how one kind of a press release, maybe a digital press release, which is also myth currently because everyone is trying to crack what the digital press release ka format could be. How could you create a kind of a framework where from the same press release or a, or, or, or a, or a, or a communication you could tweet, you could put it on Instagram, you could pick up a video, you can have a quote. And, and you know, it becomes so con convenient for different readers across the different segments to consume data in the way they like to consume. I think if those two things come into the kind of serviceability from a uh, PR consultancy, I think it'll be a great job done. Apart from being a little thoughtful in terms of uh, kind of data, because the scrutiny is so large, one small mistake and it can viral into a kind of a crisis. So, so that's, these are the three expectations. We built huge expectations from the PR agencies. So, <laughs> I mean, sometimes quite unreasonable in terms of giving not too much time. But um, I feel there has been a little bit of a, a trust deficit uh, among journalists. Uh, so I would rather start with saying what's the role of a PR agency, looking at it from our side. Is it to facilitate communication? Sometimes I'm given to believe that, no, they don't want communication, so why keep a PR agency? I mean, it's a very open question. But once we've uh, related to the situation that a PR agency is in, 
that they have very limited uh, say in exactly how the company is going to react or how much time are they going to take given the time zones and the international you know, adherences and compliances. I feel uh, uh, there is a, a, a huge progress that is already made. Uh, earlier it was, it was quite bad. I mean, I can say that uh, it was just a release giving mechanism and it used to stop there. So now I think there is a lot of uh, proactive collaborative efforts uh, um, which has set in. I feel, um, you know, uh, there is need for specialization. We've also seen so much of specialization within our own given territories. I think, uh, you know, once you've uh, been given an allocation, say for instance, if it is a healthcare company or a telecom company, if the executive on the other side is well versed with the information that is required, the journalist uh, feels far more, um, you know, uh, far more comfortable in, in handling that situation. So I feel it's already a, a lot of progress which has been made, but I feel uh, as a facilitator of uh, good, uh, you know, uh, information in nugget forms, we are actually shifting, you know, we, we are seeing people reading the boxes more. Almost with every story, we actually go to the boxes so that we don't spend time reading one full report for 10 minutes. We've internally also started making the stories more crisp. Maybe 400, 500 words is long enough, which was never the case before. So I feel those requirements, if a, if a PR agency is able to handle, look at it from the media side, and you will know the kind of pressures that we go through. I mean, at 9.30, you have to make frantic calls to get a confirmation for a deal. It's uh, very difficult. And then, you know, if things don't work out that way, the next morning there are issues of rejoinders and clarifications and things going messy. So I feel all of it is a lot of hard task for the PR side also, but I think it can be dealt with. We are making good progress, I think. So the key words which we have heard so far, and just to start from the back where Vikas ended, about from release giving mechanism to a more collaborative, proactive approach. We earlier heard the expression integrated communication. We heard co-creation. We heard authenticity. We heard nuggets. Now all these are nuggets. Is there anyone here who would want to add or ask something? I have seen a lot of things were being said on uh, Twitter and I have use some of those triggers to ask the panelists here questions already. But if there is any other aspect that you would want to know or you would want to present a perspective, this is the time. I'm Tejal. One trend that we are seeing is as we are looking at integrated communications, media houses are also using content across their own platforms. Like one peculiar trend I can observe is between the Times group, like your ET, Times of India and Business Insider. There are some stories which maybe an original story will be from ET, but the content or it's edited, it's used on Times of India, and later on it's used on Business Insider. So what is, like, I just want to understand what is the approach for this kind of content generation from a media point of view? How, why, how do you use content from your side? So uh, I think uh, we, uh, in Economic Times, we've got some 10 or 11 verticals uh, say from auto to health to telecom to oil and gas. I think the whole idea is that once a person who is actually sitting in one particular industry, the whole information which, which has been gathered by one particular media house is presented to him in one capsule. So he doesn't have to scramble for information from any other source. We also kind of uh, curate uh, information from other uh, agencies or other sources. So. I mean, uh, a case which I would like to make is that ET Health World, which I'm monitoring, has been a tremendous success. And again, in the way that it's been very participative, as Yogesh just mentioned, like, you know, whoever is wanting to write something sensible, we open the doors for them. And those are phenomenal. About collaborative uh, uh, information gathering, I think G is... Uh, on it, I mean, we, the first part of the page is all about information. Then G also gives whatever information that it has, 
with a full complete neutrality on editorial side there is no meddling around so i think that's the future which is coming i think and that's w w the whole objective of it is that that you aggregate as much information as you can today the the biggest premium is time i think so if you have just you know quick lines um, snappy infographics i think you are done actually how uh, our relation should be on that line i just wanted to tell something see uh, i know we are sitting uh, across the tables many time i i for, first of all let me uh, admit your job is the toughest one our jo job is far better far easier than you that is what i believe because uh, we, around 10 to 12 years i was uh, in print media covering business and i used to see how hardship you really people do just go on calling us come to our doorstep but i know if we are not reporter you will just not look at us but still you have to do it because boss you have a paper <laughs> so i know it's very tough job at the same time i uh, personally feel that we people are a bit rude people we uh, we do not have manners etiquettes how to behave with prs because they are doing their job we should give proper respect i i thoroughly agree with that on the same <laughs> but taking it forward i'll say uh, what i expect may, may not uh, all journalists may not say so but what i expect is that prs should be our friend i'll give you my definition of news and i think most of the journalists will ac accept it that news is not something which is after journalist it is ulta journalist news is that journalism is uh, after the news so when something is coming time to time at me immediately i come to know this is not news i should be after news a reporter is a person who is after the news and new not vice versa so if you are my friend then please make my task easy if i have to run 2 kilometers please make it shorter so how you can be my friend that is a i think key that you can make your life better and even journalist life better then another point i, I would like to uh, i don't say advice uh, but i would like to uh, give you my observation uh, regarding digital social media or online media whatever you call is that uh, your x y you, you have so many clients or whatever it is so if you see and you you are doing it i know it that is nothing but share you always share good morning i'll give you my simple example of our facebook page uh, we have something uh, 8 lakh uh, reader base which is for us which is very high uh, likes what you, we say and we have uh, earlier we used to give only uh, news hard news bad news whatever it is then we started experimenting that let us not uh, treat it as a newspaper handle let us treat it as a friends of the our uh, facebook uh, uh, friends so we started to uh, offering good morning happy raksha bandhan happy diwali with a good uh, uh, quotations and like and you will surprise to know this good morning is so hit sometime we get share of 1 lakh 1.2 lakh like that just imagine how people are fond of sharing so now you can take a cue from this or that you might be sharing so many things every day in the morning you will see that at least there are 50 60 photos images or good morning quotes is there in your whatsapp inbox so is it can you have some device that you will share on whatsapp it will go viral at its own you have to do nothing you have to just share it with your own groups suppose i am your client and suppose he is a health client and these are uh, say uh, malaria and all diseases kind of things are happening and he has a medicine on that and he has some code that take this these precautions and stay away from malaria uska ek logo rahega niche prepare it send it to your whatsapp group if you have 50 people it will go to at least 500 groups and you will surprise to know just try it out you will surprise you will see that it has reached in the lakhs of the mobiles so we have to invent something like this i think that is the social media you have to share and once you understand the power of share then it is just like a, you just push it then people do start pushing it so basically what yogesh is saying that your long term interest 
lies in not attempting to force feed what appears to be in short term interest any other questions yes okay taking ahead from what uh, yogesh just mentioned um, i understand you're talking about content creation which is a good way to go ahead and get conversations going on in the online medium um, one of my clients had a query a very valid query saying that if i engage with bloggers if i engage with bloggers what is the um, you know authenticity over there when i'm engaging with a print medium uh, if something goes wrong i there is a appeal mechanism i can go and appeal to somebody and i can you know sort it out but if i'm going out and doing a blogger engagement there's not really that kind of control a blogger can speak his mind at the same time the beauty of online medium is um obviously only those bloggers will have more popularity who are doing authentic stuff going by the basic rules of journalism my question uh, would be we do see journalist uh, breaking stories on twitter and uh, other places so how do we um, is it allowed is it a requirement for uh, a media as such is it something which is promoted by the publication houses to break stories on twitters and um, how do we what is the kind of stories that you would kind of publish what if my client needs a story online is it like um, dinesh said it has to be fa fastest fingers first kind of thing where whoever comes first is the story or um, is it like vikas said that it has to be snappy infographics which will work for me so what is it that works on an online medium and what do we do uh, if stories are getting broken on twitter and we are intending for something else you are intending for something else so, is that what you mean yeah so if we if if a story is broken on twitter like if i'm doing a press conference where i would expect a good press coverage the other day uh, the next day and if the stories are broken on twitter which hampers the kind of uh, for a press medium it would hamper the kind of news value that will have because the stories have already been broken on twitter so how do we work around that does any one of our panel have a response though i would only want to state that as far as engaging with blogs bloggers is concerned we will do that in the second or the third stage uh, of uh, third installment of this series because here we are restricting ourselves to organized online medium we will do the bloggers meet uh, separately yes yogesh difficult to answer that question if a person has got a i mean i'll uh, this is a very relative question i would say say for instance these days we get press invites which doesn't mention the the reason for the invite now it's a little tough because uh, moment there is a conference people start thinking there is some news and if there is news then let's be ahead of the others um i think you have to keep the the privileged secret a secret as far as you are concerned we would love to have those news out as quickly as we can i think there is there is no defined rule that uh, you know you need to it's very difficult also unless you have the information in hand and that's like verified and you know the normal rule of having two or three people confirming it i think it's a it's it's difficult it will be very difficult to kind of uh, uh, back it from the organization side i think very few people may be doing it would you be happy if you give uh, content on et online instead of uh, you know the newspaper it all depends on the kind of content and the tg which is going to be there if it's going to be et online and we we know that the target audience is sitting there consuming at the online space happy to do that i think it also depends on the age group you are targeting because online i'll give you some uh, i think probably you might be aware 18 to 35 is a uh, uh, you can say viewer uh, which is around more than 85% 34 to 50 is around 5 to 7% and balance is rest so 18 to 35 is the if you are targeted audience then probably online is the perfect media excellent point because which means that we as pr professionals need to understand what information is targeted towards whom and why because we attempt or we tend to believe that the press release and the press conference or maybe the one to ones is the solution for everything blanket i think we have to get out of that mindset ourselves and uh, also i saw a uh, 
tweet by Anant about how an, uh, trending on Twitter itself. By the way, Digital Mira Dost is trending nationally on Twitter. That's what uh, Vikram just informed me. Uh, uh, and um, trending on Twitter is the way to get into print also. So it may not be such a bad idea. Uh, that was, uh, uh, with my skill, a small skill uh, with the marketing agency that happened before, uh, I think the digital space okay, has increased competitively um, to an advertising or to a PR budget. Uh, do you uh, think how it is, I mean, why it is so important kind of, you know, to making an app, making a website? Uh, is, is digital spends are that many important? Is the that much important compared to a normal PR agency? One. Second, how important is to, uh, how important for a successful campaign, for example, we set up a campaign, so how important is, uh, is uh, for a successful campaign to target a particular consumer because we're making a campaign for a particular consumer? That we measure it on the target from all key CCTV communications. For example, taking advertising, taking the research agency, taking PR rules, and taking the digital. So, so first your observation is correct, the digital spends are actually going up it, and, and it's, it's simply because of the trust which is coming up because the results are there. People are able to prove certain points in terms of the reach, in terms of the message uh, delivery, in terms of consumption at the right point because there is amount of segmentation which happens. If it's a TG which is sitting here, it's consuming on digital, so it's all the more important that you spend on digital. Having said that, what works the best is the integrated campaign where I think the paradigm shift that we all as communicators need to bring in is that we need to start working across all these genres. I mean that siloism which currently exists, which says Ki, I'm a PR person so I'll work on a PR campaign. I'm a digital person so I'll go and work on digital. I'm a marketing activations person so I'll work on active. That's going to fail. If, if, that's if, again if, integration. That's again integration and, and that's, that's, that's the way to go forward. I mean 8 out of 10 successful campaigns that we do have an element of all of them together, put together, where the team comes together, brainstorms, and actually comes out with a complete communication strategy which has all of these put together at relevant points in a bid to achieve a kind of a coverage which covers each and every target audience. So only a press release can reach X number of people. You add a digital uh, plan to it, 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 it adds up to a little bit. You add an activation, it adds up. So likewise, you add up these things in an integrated manner, working together, break those silos and only then I think successful things and, and PR spends are also going up so it's a good news it's not that only digital spends are going up. Thank you Sujit and uh, I think we are oh, way over time but the best part is that the last point which I wanted is actually I've seen the tweets coming out the number of takeaways from the people has I think uh, far uh, been over what we had expected. We had thought that maybe there will be 10 or 12 takeaways, but I have lost count of the number of takeaways that people have had and which they have uh, already tweeted about. To conclude, I do wish to make a broader point, which again comes back to what these gentlemen have said repeatedly from different perspectives again and again, which perhaps we PR professionals must recognize that uh, apart from the media being an important element of our work sphere, media is also a window onto the world outside. So if we are not aware or do not understand why uh, Ailam uh, Kurdi is washed up uh, on the Turkish seashore, or we do not understand why uh, melting ice caps at our polar extremities impact uh, and, and cause uh, kidnapping for food as ransom in Maharashtra, uh, we as PR professionals would eventually, sooner or later, however well we can push press releases and um, follow up with the media, become irrelevant and insignificant and extinct. So using the media not merely to attempt to try and push what you have, but using it as a window to equip yourself to know the world better 
and accordingly then operate in it in a more integrated manner, in a more collaborative manner is what we need to do. Otherwise, as the punchline of a public interest uh, um, commercial many years ago on Doordarshan, for those of you who may have seen it, went, Marzi hai aapki, akhir sar hai aapka. Thank you. Great insights from the panelists, excellent information. And I am sure that we are somewhat a little bit more educated at the end of this hour and some uh, hour and a half than we started off with. And yes, it is evolving. It is not frozen or in uh, stone yet, but we have to, even as it is evolving, understand and equip ourselves to be relevant in this uh, world as it's emerging to continue to play our role, continue to be relevant, continue to be prosper, continue to prosper. Thank you everybody, the audience, the panelists, thanks a lot for making it and being such a lively panel when participating. Thank you. You really uh, enlightened us in several uh, uh, spheres of the things that we need to do going forward. Um, on behalf of Ad Factors, may I hand over a small memento to each of you. To Dinesh. To Yogesh. And to Vivek. Sorry, Vikas. Sorry, Vikas. Arnab, to you we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all very much and thank you for being here. Please fill the forms that are on your uh, chairs. We'd like to get feedback from you. And please join us for a cup of tea and some snacks. Thank you.